Hey guys, I'm Jameson from Rogue Engineer and today I'm going to show you how we cut this hole in the side of our brand new house and put a giant window in because, well, should have always been there from the start. Let's get started. Now ever since we moved in, we realized that this mudroom of ours, as well as the stairwell that leads down to the basement, is really dark. There's just not a whole lot of natural light that comes in there. So what we decided to do was add a massive window in the stairwell to let a ton, ton of natural light into the mudroom as well as down into the basement. So first things first, we needed to measure the wall and see how big of a window we could actually get in there. We also needed to account for the header above it, um, which we used to LVLs that were nine and a quarter inches tall. After some measuring, we determined that we could fit in a six foot wide by eight foot tall window. Then we headed on over to Home Depot to their millworks department where we could pick out our window. After sitting down with the Home Depot employee and going over all the options for the window, we were able to settle on an Anderson window from them and we added a couple of features in order to make it a little bit more efficient for our home. Which brings me to our sponsor for this project today, Home Depot. Not only do they carry a, a ton of cool products in the store, but in their app, they also have how-to guides for things like how to install a window or how to hang drywall. Another great service that they provide that you may not know is their tool rental program. They've got tons of tools and we've used them for all kinds of other projects, including refinishing a floor in a house that we flipped. So if you want to learn more about the tool rental program or those how-to guides, make sure you check out their mobile app or head on over to homedepot.com. Once it was delivered, we could start to lay it out on the wall exactly how we needed it. We needed to also account for the trimmer studs on the sides of the window. The rough opening needs to be a half inch gap all the way around the window, as well as the header above it and the sill plate. Once we laid that out all on the wall, we went ahead and started cutting away the drywall. I did so with a reciprocating saw and cut it up into smaller pieces that we could pull off the wall. Once we got all the drywall off, then we could start removing the insulation. I tried to keep as much insulation as possible so that we didn't have to put back in that much insulation once the window was filled in. Before we could cut the studs out, we needed to support the, the weight of the roof because once we cut those studs out, the, the top plate is gonna wanna sag from the weight of the roof. So the way that we did that was we constructed an I-beam out of two by sixes. Once we got that I-beam together, I then jacked it up to the ceiling and that's just gonna temporarily support the ceiling, the weight of the ceiling and keep that top plate from bowing in the middle. Once we got that supported, we can move on to cutting out our studs. Before I go any further, I want to touch on some of the terminology when it comes to framing out a window. There's uh, cripplers. Crippler studs are the studs that we are actually leaving in the wall where we cut and remove the, the studs for the rough opening. Those are the short studs that go from the bottom plate to the sill plate as well as from the top of the header up to the top plate. Then you've got your king studs, which those are going to run the full length from the top or from the bottom plate up to the top plate. The jack studs get nailed to the king studs, and those are going to support the weight of the header. Now the header is a, um, a vertical board that is going to carry the, the weight of the, um, the roof that's going to carry that load, and that goes above the rough opening. For our header, we went with two nine and a quarter inch LVLs. However, you could use two two by tens, I think up to six feet, give or take. Um, you're gonna wanna look at your local code and see how far you can span those. We also needed to nail those together in, an, in a nail pattern that goes in accordance with our local code. And to finish the header off, we went ahead with a two by six on the bottom and the top of it. And that's just gonna give us something to nail to those crippler studs, as well as a, uh, a trim nailer for the inside of the window. With the insulation out, then we can get a better idea of our window opening. We made our final measurements and then cut the studs out where the window and header would go. 
I also used a reciprocating saw to cut the back of the studs away from the exterior sheathing so that the window would still be covered up. However, we could remove those studs and then start putting in our structure, including the header and the trimmer studs for the window itself. With the window structure in, then we can move on to cutting out the sheathing. To get started on that, we went and started by drilling holes in each corner, and that would give us the perfect location from the outside of the house so that we could then follow up with a reciprocating saw. After we got the hole cut for the rough opening, I went ahead and actually cut the siding back, just the siding, not the sheathing itself. I cut that back just a little bit more. I think it was about four or five inches. And that's gonna allow us um, to be able to flash or to be able to install our window with the nail flange to the sheathing and flash it to the sheathing itself. One thing that I saw after doing some research that I also thought was smart was installing a lap siding or a beveled siding board on the bottom of the sill plate that allows for any water that gets into the window sill that makes sure that it's gonna drain off and out of away from the house instead of back into the house or just sitting on that sill plate. Once we cut and installed that board down, we went ahead and flashed the bottom side of the sill. And for that, we used stretch tape by Zip and this is a great product because you don't have to worry about the corners getting sloppy. You can simply lay that uh, tape inside the, the sill plate and then stretch the corners nice and tight and you've got a perfect seal. Now we were able to pull the window out and start to prep that. Now the nail flanges on the window didn't come attached to the window so we had to simply tap those into place with a block. Before we could put the window in, we needed to apply a bedding for the window. And what that is, is just a, a sealant and that's gonna protect um, any water from getting into that window sill as well. It's just another layer of protection. For the bedding material, we went with DAP 3.0 and that's a non-water-based sealant, which is very important for this step. We went down the sides, across the top, and then across the back of the sill plate, creating a little bit of a water dam. Now it came time to set the window, which means all hands on deck. This thing weighed 400 pounds, so we needed to get some real muscle in here to lift this thing up and get it in place. After assuring that the window was plumb level and square, we went ahead and installed it with two inch roofing nails. Now the roofing nails are used because the head is really flat. That way when your exterior trim goes over it, you have a nice flush seal. With the window fastened in place, then we could add that flashing to the sides and the top. We started with the sides and ran up and down the, both sides of the window and then finished off with the top and that creates that kind of shingle layering so that the water comes over the top and doesn't, cannot get in underneath of the side flashing. One important thing to note is that we're not flashing the bottom and that's just going to allow any water that does get into that sill to be able to drain freely. With the window all flashed and sealed up and installed, we went ahead and called it quits for the night. But then when we came back in the morning, we made sure to insulate all around the window any voids that were there or that were uh, kind of cut out during the construction process. And then we actually insulated around the inside of that rough opening in between the rough opening and the window with DAP's no warp foam. And this is important because if you use a foam that expands too much, especially with windows and doors that are moving, you're going to cause the frame to warp and that could limit the way that the, the window functions. After we got that seal with the foam, we came back and filled it in um, the rest of the way with BATS insulation, and that's just gonna provide even more insulation. With all the insulation wrapped up, then we can move on to the drywall process. After I got the drywall hung, I actually talked my father-in-law into coming over and running the drywall for me because for one, I'm not too fond of being that high up on a ladder and he's just way better at doing drywall. 
As far as the drywall process goes, you're gonna start by applying the tape, and we use paper tape for this, with joint compound to all of the joints between the drywall, the existing drywall and the new drywall. Then we're gonna come back and apply a fill coat, followed up by a finish coat. After the finish coat is applied, then we can come back and sand down any high spots, and it's ready for paint. After painting the walls, we moved on to installing the trim. We installed trim, obviously, inside as well as outside. For the trim with this window, we matched the rest of the house, which is a one by four on each side and then a five quarter by six board on the top and bottom. That five quarter by six board extends a half inch past the one by fours on each side. And that kind of gives you a really simple way to achieve a little craftsman look. As for the outside, we went with the same hardy board um, siding and battens that we had before. We went for a five quarter by six um, to trim out the exterior of the window and then match the existing battens that were there. After the trim was installed, then we followed up with some caulk to make sure that we sealed off all of the openings to not only prevent water in there, but just give it a nice finished look. For the outside, we used DAP's Dynaflex Ultra, which is a great product for exterior applications, and it's gonna give you long-lasting all-weather protection as well as resist against cracking and yellowing. For the inside, we went with DAP's Extreme Stretch. Now, this is a great product because it's going to do as exactly as it's called. It's going to stretch with all of the drywall, the joints between the drywall and the wood as those move from season to season. Once everything was caulked in, then we could follow up with a couple of coats of paint to finish off the inside and outside of the window. And there you have it. We've got a window in place and it looks amazing. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was an exciting yet extremely scary process of cutting a hole in the side of our house to put this giant window in. However, I'm super pumped that we did. But before you go, make sure you check out that video right there. YouTube thinks you'll like it, and I do too. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, that one's going to be right there. And if you want to see the full write-up on this window install, make sure you hit that button right there. Until next time, be safe and happy building.